Hey, and welcome to Reporting In. I am your host, Malcolm Fleshner. This is the show on the TYT network dedicated exclusively to journalism, to journalists, to investigative reporters. We talk to journalists working in the field internationally sometimes, talk about the stories they're covering, get the story behind the story sometimes even. Hmm? Hmm? Yeah. And today on the show, I'm talking to Alex Koch, who is, uh, I'll give you, well, first of all, welcome. Alex, are you there? Yeah, yeah, thanks a lot. Wonderful. Wonderful. Thank you. He's Skyping in from Brooklyn, New York, and thank you for taking the time to talk to me today. Uh, now I'm going to give you your, uh, your resume here briefly. Uh, Alex is an award-winning investigative reporter whose work has appeared in The Nation, Salon, Vice.com, International Business Times, and now just recently you've become a reporter uh, on staff with Sludge, which is a terrific name. I'm, you know, I'm sure they really market tested that. Um, but uh, so I'm going to find out about Sludge. But first, uh, your uh, your claim you your claim is that you uh, in your bio is that your specialty is following the money, which is ironic a little bit considering you have chosen a profession that is notoriously unrewarding when it comes to money. But I'm not going to let that judge. I'm not going to judge based on that. And so, uh, speaking of judge and words that rhyme with judge, what is sludge? I'm I'm sorry, I'm unfamiliar. I should know this, but what is sludge? Oh, no problem. You know, we're we're a, a startup uh, that focuses on money and politics. So that's just what I've been doing for for my five years of being a money and politics reporter. Um, and we are currently part of the Civil First Fleet. So Civil was a company um, based in New York that got some seed funding to launch uh, kind of a journalism network uh, that a lot of different newsrooms are starting to use around the world. I think we've got about 13 in the first fleet, and um, we have our own platform, and we are, there's also going to be a crypto token that's going to be associated with, uh, with the whole platform uh, launching uh, in a few weeks, and uh, that token is going to allow people to um, vote on things like the constitution of the company, to vote uh, a, new web- a new website on or off the island, essentially, um, so there's a whole constitution kind of behind this, but uh, you know, more importantly, what we're doing specifically is uh, we're looking at all kinds of uh, races, elections, uh, lobbying, um, you know, FARA filings, anything that's money related uh, and politics related, we're going to cover. So we do state, national, international, even local stuff. All right. Well, so and where is it? What's the the website for Sludge? Uh, it's just readsludge.com. Readsludge.com. Uh, okay, so that's and where definitely it follow us on Twitter. Uh, we're also at readsludge. Okay, and we'll also for your Chiron, we've got the uh, your own personal Twitter address, so people can can find you there and follow that's you there. Great. So, um, but I want to before because you're also you've been a contributor for the past five months to TYT Investigates, and you've covered some really interesting stories that I want to get to. Uh, but before we do that. I wanted to find out a little bit about your background personally, like so where you grew up and how you did you you know did you work on the school paper in high school and in college and that sort of thing or so where did this love or interest in journalism come from and all that sort of thing? so let's start where did you uh, where did you grow up where are you from I'm from Chapel Hill North Carolina I'm the uh, the son of a public school librarian and a public university professor uh, in Chapel Hill and in that in that Orange County um, and uh, you know I grew up in uh, on the swim team and, and a musician, to be honest. Uh, when I even when I went to college, I studied music, and I went to Duke uh, University in Durham for grad school for composition. So I didn't actually get into journalism until kind of the latter part of my degree in music. I got more kind of politically engaged. I started reading a lot more. I mean, certainly around around uh, Obama's first election, I was following things very closely, and I started to get a little more politically involved. And so. A few years later, I started to, to blog, and uh, I got a job after grad school. I got a job at a think tank in Durham, North Carolina, called the Institute for Southern Studies. And, and the gig was to research uh, North Carolina state money and politics and state elections. So that's kind of where I got my crash course on this stuff from Chris Crom, who's the longtime executive director, and our editorial director there, Stu Sturgis. And I was really, uh, I, I was very fortunate to fall into a really great gig at a, a, a great nonprofit and really learn from some of the best. In the business, so um, your your, uh, your political awakening led you into journalism. Did uh, were you familiar with the Young Turks back then, or is this uh, that's something you only encountered later on when you were looking? Yeah, for other I wasn't a, I wasn't aware of, of the Young Turks until maybe a few years ago. Um, I just kind of was you know, getting more into the media scene, and I I heard about um, Jenk, and and I actually saw him at I was covering. I knew about them before this, but I was cov- the first time I, I, I saw him was I was covering a. Uh, sort of anti-money and politics rally in Washington D.C. Democracy Spring. Mm, oh, right. uh, so uh-huh. I went there. 
I went there for a few days and I, I did a lot of interviews and reported on it for Facing South and for D Smog Blog. And um, I, I met, that was the first time I'd met like TYT fans. And uh, I met some really great young people who were really devoted to the TYT and, and Wolfpack and all these things. So um, that was kind of my first introduction really to, to, to the platform. And I, I saw that it seems an interesting uh, background that you know music doesn't generally seem to mesh with journalism typically. Like, like, Journalists, uh, my perception of journalists, a lot of them, it's because they don't have any other talents. That's certainly why I do this, because I couldn't, I mean, like music, forget it. Uh, although I did see in your, your bio that um, in your, uh, you got a PhD where you fused contemporary classical with electronic dance music, which I thought was, that's really interesting because uh, that seems like it gives some, it's, there's something ever for everyone to hate there. No. Right. Well, now I'm a journalist, so everyone loves me. Right? <laughs> hey, that's, that's right. I <laughs> think people hate more than hearing EDM. Ah, no, I'm kidding. People love it. It's very popular. Um, but that is interesting, the idea of combining, uh, sort of merging classical and EDM. Um, so maybe we can, uh, do you have any anywhere after the, uh, maybe in the description box, we can send people some links to listen to some of your music. Do you still do music at all, or are you too busy? You know, I'm, I'm on hiatus, um, but I do have a website for my music. It's, it's a dire beat. Dot com. We can talk about that later. Um, so that has some of my classical, some of my electronics, some of my fusion stuff. I keep the site live because I don't want to forget about the, the tunes I used to write. But uh, I'm pretty focused on journalism right now. Right, right. Okay. Well, let's let's get into that. So um, you've I just you know you've covered a number of stories recently that have appeared on TYT Investigates or elsewhere. And one of them, I think the most recent that I saw, had to do with uh, everybody's favorite conservative. Um, I don't know if he counts as a, is he a, a, a gnome or um, what his classification is, but Ben Shapiro, uh, who is uh, much beloved as the fast talking right wing gen conservative genius. Don't go up against him, he'll destroy you. And yet you have, uh, you, you're challenging Ben Shapiro and you're saying, hey, Ben Shapiro, you are funded by giant uh, right wing think tanks and billionaires who are paying your way and you're uh, you're not necessarily being super upfront about that. Is uh, is that an accurate assessment of uh, of the your more recent coverage of him? Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't say he's not upfront about it. I think you know Shapiro. If you if you talk to him about it, you email him, you call him, like he'll he'll talk to you and he'll say like, sure, you know, I uh, I I benefit from these these uh, organizations that are are billionaire funded. Uh, including, of course, his his Daily Wire website, which is owned by by the Wilkes brothers, who um, are, are pretty well known at this point for being big GOP and especially Ted Cruz donors uh, back in the 2016 primary. Um, but, uh, you know, what, what he told me, which is uh, something I would have expected of really anyone to say um, uh, when asked about their sort of billionaire funding is that, you know, he's, he hasn't met most of these people. They've never swayed his opinion on anything. Uh, he's, he's a straight shooter. He's, he calls the balls and strikes on Trump. And, uh, you know, so we printed his comments, uh, and, I, and I just, you know, as an investigative reporter, I'm not really here to judge. I'm here to, uh, at least I'm not here to judge about about uh, what's in one's mind uh, in terms of, of funding. I am happy to judge about bigoted comments, which Ben Shapiro was known for as well. Um, but, you know, in terms of, of his funding, I mean, I, I printed what he said, and, I, and I, I laid out all the details about all the funders who fund Daily Wire, who you know, funded Breitbart, where he used to work, and who fund... Uh, these two pretty well-known organizations at this point that are, are, are hosting Shapiro speaking gigs um, very frequently, uh, Young America's Foundation and Turning Point USA. Right. So, like, and the, the if, you, if you go to the, the TYT Investigates uh, on our website and look at the story, you have these charts that lay out all the connections between these. You know, it's really like a murderer's row of these right-wing billionaires, the Koch brothers, the Mercers, uh, you know, Foster, is that name Foster Freeze, is that his name? Right. Uh, right. It, it sounds like, a, it sounds like it's, a, it's supposed to be an ice cream, like, you know, like a Dairy Queen type place. So, oh, we're going to go to Foster Freeze, you want anything? Um, get me a root beer float. Um, but, uh, so it's, it, these people are, are, are and through, uh, as you point out, uh, Turning Point USA, and what was it, Young America Foundation? Young, Amer Young America's Foundation. Yeah, um, they Young have, America's they, Foundation. They have a lot of speakers. So yeah, so they they funnel the money into these uh, these groups, uh, and uh, Charlie Kirk is another one of them. Who and then they pay to have them go to campuses and speak around the country and so on and so forth. And uh, you you as you point out, you quote Ben Shapiro in the article saying essentially, look, I was a right wing prick before. I'm a right wing prick now. 
you know, the funding you know, that they, these billionaires are behind me doesn't change that. And that he's not 100% a, a never, you know, he's not a 100% a, a Trump right or wrong guy, which is true and has been true uh, for the most part. But his criticisms are not about some of the most egregious things that, uh, that we find objectionable about Trump. But um, I guess what I wanted to ask you about is that uh, he's part of a collective that uh, they talk about the free exchange of ideas and the marketplace of ideas. And doesn't this kind of, that the fact that he is supported by all these billionaires, uh, does that, doesn't that imply there's sort of a, a they're, they're weighting the scale uh, in the free marketplace, of, they're putting the thumb on the scale or they're, because if, if in the free exchange of ideas, the winner is supposed to be the one with the better ideas, not the one who has more money backing them. But if you've got money backing you to go to all these college campuses and constantly, you know, drum up uh, fervor for right-wing causes, that's, is that the, does that really count as the free exchange of ideas? Uh, it's a great point you bring up, and, and no, I don't think it's it's an even playing field. It's funny because the Koch brothers, you know, Charles, Charles Koch is a funder uh, of uh, Young America's Foundation, and also uh, probably I think the largest funder of um, Donors Trust, which is a, a uh, this sort of anonymizing um, uh, fund where you can you know big donors have accounts with them, and then they that those accounts they can kind of request Donors Trust to give money to wherever they like. But their names are taken off the donation. The donation comes in as from donors' trust. So Coke is is really known for for giving to them, especially, and they're they're a funder of Young America's Foundation. Um, but the point being that you know Charles Coke especially um, talks about and David Coke with Coke Industries. They say, oh, we're we're against government handouts, government subsidies, crony capitalism. We want a real free free market, free marketplace of goods, and also a free marketplace of ideas. But as you say, when they're when they're tipping the scales so much in favor of not just Ben Shapiro, but countless university professors that they fund in kind of uh, you know free market economics programs around the country and, and universities and colleges. Um, they're actually yeah weighting the scales in favor of their ideology, uh, and it's it's in fact not uh, quite the free marketplace of ideas that they they claim it is. Well, and that's I mean there's not really any controversy about that. If you read uh, Dark Money by Jane Mayer, she lays out how. This has been a long-term plan by these uh, you know, right-wing billionaires to change the debate in at college campuses and uh, uh, you know put seed money in for right-wing professor or libertarian free market whatever professors endow professors and chairs all across the country. The uh, the Mercator Center, I guess, at the George Mason University, it just came out with a study explaining how Bernie Sanders' uh, Medicare for All plan is going to cost. Thirty-two trillion dollars—that's outrageous. Yeah, right now we, you know, we pay thirty-four trillion dollars in, in for healthcare and don't cover nearly as many people. But thirty-two trillion dollars. So they're, I mean, they're purposefully attempting to change the the debate and shift the debate. Uh, um, you know, weighted in favor of these ideas that really aren't that popular. You know, I mean, the idea that everyone should be paying uh, their own way entirely for healthcare, no matter what happens. It's just not that popular, and the idea that there should be uh, the libertarian ideas about, like, you know, that government shouldn't be uh, getting all up in your business about inspecting your meat and uh, food and protecting you from, uh, you know, the, you know, any sort of safety regulations, all that sort of thing. They're they're not that popular. So it's sort of my sense is this is use of money to try to so force it down our throats because the universities and colleges they they're like, hey, great, free money, we don't mind. And then it, you know, on campus it seems like you have, the, and then all these speakers come and they're, you know, and they drum up a lot of interest. And Tifa comes out. I mean, they all sort of play their role. But it's it it, it all is seriously uh, meddling with the free exchange of ideas. And there's a lot of ways they're doing it, and they're not really there's there's, there's not any question as that that's what they're trying to do. I guess it's not right. Really a yeah, and, and you mentioned you mentioned Jane Mayer's uh, dark money, and Jane Mayer really is the best. In the business of covering the Koch brothers, I've learned so much from her New Yorker reporting, and especially from her book Dark Money. Uh, it was a really great experience to read that book because it, it confirmed a lot of stuff that I've been researching and reporting on myself. Um, and, and and so um, you know she's exactly right, and you're you're right on with this. I mean, what they're doing is because the ideas are unpopular, uh, whether it's on a college campus where people you know generally uh, are are on the left or on the liberal side of things. That's just how academics are. That's just the nature of, of the business, um, or, or whether it's uh, kind of out in the open. 
Um, you know, the Cokes are, are doing all they can in their, in their network, too. It's not just the Cokes. It's John Schnatter, the former kind of disgraced CEO of Papa John's. Uh, he and Charles Koch have co-founded three different free market centers uh, in the Midwest uh, with millions of dollars from both of their coffers um, to influence uh, you know, free market economics on college campuses. Um, so, you know, they're doing this all around the country, um, and, and they're trying to, they're desperately sort of flailing uh, in order to change young people's minds so that, you know, liberals won't completely take over the entire uh, academic and social discourse of, of the country. Um, clearly, we're far away from that now, but I think it, it is more and more likely uh, as younger people are more and more left. And, um, you know, people like Ben Shapiro really are playing this role for the, for the I mean, let's, let's be honest, these are almost entirely old white male conservatives who have all this money and are putting this money into uh, the coffers of, of, of Turning Point USA with Charlie Kirk. Uh, you know, Ben Shapiro, uh, with, with uh, his speaking gigs and, and his website, Daily Wire. Uh, and there's a lot more of these characters. Now they're kind of embracing this guy, Kyle Kushev, I think, is his name. He was a, he's a Parkland survivor, a young kid who appears to be the only one who is very pro-gun mm. uh, of all the survivors. And they're, they're propping him up as well. And, and it's this network that I've really come to kind of notice uh, and really follow acutely now, which um, it's kind of this incestuous network of funders. As you can see on my map, a lot of the funders who fund Young America's Foundation, uh, also fund Turning Point USA, uh, and a lot of other groups, too. There's Young Americans for Liberty, there's other groups. Uh, and so this was kind of this, this growing network of, of billionaire conservative-funded uh, student groups that are trying to change young, impressionable minds. And is, I mean, I, I tried to think about it, I came up with this question, but I couldn't really have an answer to it. Is there any sort of equivalent on the left where there are are progressive foundations, or I mean, I know they you would you hear you know George Soros and whoever else are, are you know they, they're uh, they're inculcating our young minds with uh, socialist ideology and uh, brainwashing us. But uh, are there any equivalent to this kind of foundations? These kind of you know billionaire or well-heeled uh, white people or anybody really who's doing this sort of thing on the left? Yeah, I mean, I think there, there are certainly uh, groups of young people who get funding from you know, other wealthy sources, whether it's another foundation or it's, it's an individual. Um, but, yeah, in my experience, no, there isn't really an exact equivalent. Uh, I think, again, like I was saying, you know, the sort of liberal ideas are actually a lot more popular. And so there's less of this urgency to, to go and change people's minds because a lot of young people are already on that track anyway. Uh, and a lot of people, you know, they go to college and they become more liberal. And that's not because there's liberal professors. It's because when you learn about more stuff, a lot of more people than not are just inclined to, to want to support a, a healthy government. You know, right. They're inclined to, to, be, to be anti-racist and things like this. This is not what the right is for. So you're suggesting that by going to college and when you actually enjoy engage in the free exchange of ideas, you don't come out thinking that Donald Trump has all the answers? Okay. You say I so. Mean, if, if, if you look at the data, that's how it is. And you know, I, I, I don't want to be misinterpreted as being classist or, or uh, elitist, but it, I mean, it's true. I lived in North Carolina for most of my life until moving to New York. And uh, when you would look at the, for example, in 2012, we had a, uh, a marriage amendment, they called it. It was, it was to enshrine uh, an anti-gay marriage uh, amendment in the state constitution. And when you looked at, at all the voting patterns for who voted for the amendment, who voted against the amendment, um, it was all the people who voted against the amendment were in college towns. And all the people who voted for the amendment were in rural areas. And, and that's just kind of how it goes. I mean, the, you know, if you look at Trump voters, there, there's a large swath of uneducated, um, uneducated voters who like Donald Trump and voted for Donald Trump. And, and I, this is just to say, like, there is a lot of uh, pressure, I think, being put on colleges from the right to you know, portray both sides. It's kind of like this media debate, too, where you have these two equivalent sides, uh, allegedly, where it's really not the case. And there's actually, they're lopsided because that's just how humanity in America is. Yeah, so um, I wonder now, one of the things that I noticed that you touched on in the story, the, the Ben Shapiro story, is that some of these groups, even though they're all on the right, that they don't necessarily get along with each other. There has been bad blood between Turning Point USA and uh, the, uh, the Young America's Foundation. What's that all about? Well, recently, yeah, an official, the top official at, at Young America's Foundation uh, wrote an internal memo that got leaked, so that's why we know about it. The memo was entirely about Turning Point USA and Charlie Kirk, its leader, 
uh, and how they have misled the public countless times, uh, trying to claim that they are an umbrella organization for other groups like Young America's Foundation, when that's not the case at all. And Young America's Foundation was founded, I think, in 1960. Um, it, uh, so this is this is a it, it, it's definitely propaganda from Charlie Kirk, but that's kind of what he was hired to do when he when he uh, you know, when he started this group. I mean, he's a Trump propagandist. They, they couldn't be more pro-Trump, anti-immigrant. Um, they're just a rubber stamp on on everything that the Trump administration does. And honestly, when when Trump's no longer president, they're going to lose a lot of relevance. And, and um, I'm going to laugh at that. <laughs> but um, yeah, so so Young America's Foundation, as despicable as their speakers are, and we're talking about people like Ted Nugent. The speaker that they promote book gigs for, Ann Coulter, until recently was on their on their list. Dinesh D'Souza, who is one of the most uninformed uh, public speakers I, I could ever imagine, um, uh, is on their roster, and they promote him and his book. Um, so this is by no means a good faith organization. However, um, they they have trouble with Turning Point USA. A taking credit for some of their work. B um, inflating their own numbers. Uh, it's just kind of like Donald Trump. It's inflating the numbers of people who go to their event, uh-huh. just like Trump always inflates the number of people at his inauguration and at his rallies. Um, and they do a lot of dishonest stuff, and I think a lot of college organizers, because you know both groups have college chapters, and that's, that's really one of their main things, is to galvanize young students. Um, the College uh, Young America's Foundation chapters are getting very frustrated with the Turning Point USA people. And um, so, so, young, so Young America's Foundation basically put out a memo saying, we really need to, to watch Turning Point USA. We shouldn't be working with them. Uh, they're really dishonest and, and kind of a fraudulent organization, which is absolutely true. Yeah, that, I mean, that's that, that's saying if they're com- mm-hmm. complaining that you're dishonest, then, uh, well, I guess you have to question any group that's, that has the words Young Americas in its name and they're funding Ted Nugent. Because, I mean, I, don't, I mean, that, when I think of Young Americans, I think of Ted Nugent. Yeah. Young Americans can't get enough of Ted Nugent. It's Taylor well, Swift, yeah. Ted Nugent, uh, One Republic. Um, so, uh, these, these, so anyway. if, you, if you look at the, I mean, my chart is really helpful. I was, I was happy. I really like this little sys tool. You can go on littlesys.org and create maps. These kind of, and it's made my life so much easier because now it's, it's not just for visualization. It's, it's so I can actually make sense of all the connections because sometimes there's a lot. Uh, and it's a lot easier to see a visual representation than just you know, writing in your notes or on a computer. So if you look at my graph, I've got uh, Foster Freeze, like you mentioned, he's a Wyoming, uh, very wealthy Wyoming right. conservative um, who, who supported Rick Santorum in, I think, 2012 for, for uh, president. So that was, that was interesting. You've got Bernie Marcus, who uh, these are donors to. to um, right, he's from Home Depot. Uh, the turning point. Yep, the, one of the Home Depot co founders. You've got Richard uh, Uline, I'm going to say his name right. Richard Uline, I think he's an Illinois uh, billionaire. Illinois is the state that. Um, uh, Turning Point USA is actually based, uh, and a lot of the donors come from Illinois. If you, if you kind of look into it, uh, but Richard Uline is is either the most the, the the biggest donor in this election cycle to politics, or he's the second only to Sheldon Adelson. Wow, uh, he's just he's been trying to I think put his mark on on the Republican Party uh, probably because he's pretty old and, and he wants to have a legacy, you know. And you've got people like Koch and Adelson who are a lot more famous than him. Uh, but, you know, so he's putting a ton of money into super PACs and outside spending. He's also a funder of Turning Point. Bruce Rauner, the, the Republican governor of Illinois. Yeah, he's Illinois. a current, he's an elected official, and yet he's also, curiously, very wealthy. Huh, who would have thought? Extremely wealthy. I mean, he, he's, he's in that famous uh, Illinois governor's race this yeah. year where it's billionaire versus a billionaire uh, on both parties. Uh, yeah, it doesn't exactly strike me as, as a, a democratic way of uh, determining the leader of a state. Uh, but you know that's just, and then there's the Bradley Foundation, which is which comes originally from the Bradley family. They are probably the the, the biggest kind of influencers on the on the right that no one knows about. Mm-hmm. Um, they do a lot of funding of think tanks, just like the Koch Foundation. So, I mean, that's just a list of some of the people who fund uh, TP USA, uh, and, and it kind of gives you a sense. You know, when people like Charlie Kirk and Candace Owens say things or tweet things, um, sense of who's kind of calling the shots and what they what what those donors really want. These people would be saying. Yeah. Well, I appreciate your uh, your sharing your your perspectives on this these stuff and and uh, like <laughs> maybe Ben Shapiro hangs out in this crowd so that he can look good by comparison because they they seem like a really scurrilous bunch if you ask me and their funders are even worse. But I appreciate your doing the investigative work to to uh, uncover 
all these people who are really, you know, they claim that they're supporting the free exchange of ideas, but they're really, what they're really trying to do is undermine our democracy. So it's, uh, it's they, they need to be exposed, and I appreciate the work you're doing. And for those of you at home who want to uh, see future work that Alex is involved in, yeah, you must, I don't know how you like the fact that your last name is probably how they all, people often mispronounce the Koch brothers' names or associate with you with them in some way, sure. but it's, it's Alex Koch and not Koch, and he has nothing to do with them except uh, to have contempt for them. And uh, and you're going to be so it's it's uh, the the website is Reed Sludge, Reed Sludge dot com. Reed Sludge dot com. Right. Uh, Twitter, Twitter, we're at Reed Sludge. I'm A L E X K O P C H on Twitter. Um, pretty accessible. My DMs are open. Hit me up. You know, I'm always interested in hearing what people want to want 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 to see online. What what they would like me to report on. So and especially uh, if they want to hear contemporary classical and electronic dance music. Right. Definitely, it's a little it's a little old at this point. Probably 2012 was my dissertation, but uh, I yeah, it's good stuff. I, I'll you know, and I have I have a um, I have a dissertation, a written dissertation online uh, at Duke University somewhere, but I think the, the link is busted. But uh, you know, for for the the one for the one viewer out there who wants to read it, you can probably track it down somewhere. It's a it's a, it's a cool hundred pages about Germany and and. San Francisco and, and what's going on there. Wow. Well, I want. I know. I'm not sure. I'm going to read your dissertation, but I uh, I definitely want to listen to the music. So I'm going to do that. Hopefully, we'll have we'll put the you know uh, links in the uh, you know description box below, as they say. And awesome. in the meantime, I, you know, good luck with Sludge. Uh, I, it sounds like a great endeavor. I hope it's successful. And I look forward to seeing more stories from you there. And uh, thanks for coming on the show. And uh, to the rest of you at home, thanks so much for watching. Appreciate it. Another episode of Reporting In in the Tank. I thought it was great. It was really interesting what Alex had to say, and I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks to all the crew and everybody. Yeah, they're going to give me high fives and whatever and such. And Griffin, my man Griffin's back. Thank you, Griffin. Everybody at home, thank you for watching Reporting In. I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope you'll tune in next time as well for another great episode. See you then.